Hey everybody, we're back with Doki Doki Literature Club again. Uh, I don't know where this game goes, but I like to issue a little content warning that at some point I've heard the other shoe drops and it gets disturbing. There's a trigger warning at the start of the game if you're easily uh, disturbed. You don't like to see disturbing stuff or you're a child, please stop watching. Just read the synopsis, I guess, and then decide if you want to keep watching or just, you know, if you think you can handle it, then keep watching. But anyway, okay, you three, here we go. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange right now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase Do I hear sound coming from a different tab? <laughs> Am I... Is this one of those games? Is it playing with me? Is it doing Psycho Mantis? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Ooh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. Sai, Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to, anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Huh, actually, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? Yeah, he's got a southern accent now. Deal with it. I hope she's all right. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Huh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And secondly, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Who? That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Ooh, save some excitement for the rest of us. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Um... Um... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No! That's not it at all! You're the most talented person here, you know? Now Natsuki's pouting too? Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit. But I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have to you have beautiful handwriting, you know, so you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? I'm about that. I I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Ryan. The one who truly is useless. <laughs> Don't say that in your cute southern drawl. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy, pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah... I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. A little forward, madam. It's not like Monica's gonna give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Ryan may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance, so therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Ryan to... What are you saying? It will be... Ladies, ladies, there's more than enough Ryan to go around. I'll be with Natsuki from 8 a.m. until noon, and then I'll take a one-hour lunch break, and then I'll be with Yuri from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., and then maybe you and I could get dinner later, Monica. And baking, is it? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Ryan to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. 
Sorry, sorry, I was just saying, though. Jeez, can we just settle this already? Yeah, Ryan, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, uh, of course. Hmm, very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Um, you know what? I think we should say, like, hold up. I, I like that the game gave me a fourth choice here. Let's go take a... Let's spend some time with Sayori. She's having a bad time. I mean, if it's going to be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors and... But Monica said... Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez, do you really hate us that much? No. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Oh. All right, in that case, let's, let's help Yuri. We're kindred spirits. We'll probably, I'll probably be the most useful helping out Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you? Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. No, I was just saying, ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Ryan? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I'd be fine. Okay, okay, everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Ryan? <laughs> Me? I do declare. I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Natsuki. What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. No, that's not what I meant at all. Ah, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm, I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Ryan picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so, so, I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature, I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell she tried to say something Sayori wouldn't, would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No. I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. Say, ladies, it's that. Hey, there's more than enough of me to go around, but I wouldn't say I'm nothing. But I'm going to say this. You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Ah, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for me today, so I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Ma um, Monka S and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um, eh? I turn around. Sorry. I realized I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alrighty then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Huh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Alrighty then. But in that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way. So I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way, madam. Ma'am. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Ryan. I think that we'll make a very productive team. Even if you only choose me because you felt bad or something. Wait! You don't actually think that, do you? I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But, Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you are overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Eh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I wanna. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? Do you also believe me that when people get desperate, the knives come out? Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my own eyes for a long while. I believe you. 
As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Oh, me too, Canucks Blues, Game 3. I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door and Yuri follows. Beep, 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 beep. I can't believe this. Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday. Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori, my anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, but who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. It's already Sunday. It's just that easy. Didn't even have to write a poem. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've even been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. By putting Yuri, but putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? There you yeah, visit her house. All right, I've, I've got a very... It's, it's a new area of the game. I'm nervous about what might be happening behind the scenes here. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Ryan! She's not dead. I sit down in her room. She forces a smile, but it's easy to tell she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, eh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Ryan. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori. I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. Ha ha ha. Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Ryan. I've done no such thing, madam. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Ryan? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. And here I, I made all those alarm clock jokes in the first episode. Do I look like a jerk now? What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? 
Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? I am going to be honest. I did think she was about to... Like, maybe I played too much World of Horror. I thought her shoulders were going to get like a big pair of scissors that came out of them and cut off my head. <laughs> I had the vibe that maybe something like this was coming as well. But simultaneously, I was like, I don't know. She might also turn into a demon and chop off my head. Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you, even if there's only so much I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Ryan. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, you'd have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. Ah ha ha ha. That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me, but then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club makes a giant pair of scissors come out of- It feels like a spear going through my heart. Okay. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. Ha <laughs> ha. You're right that I just don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Ryan. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything went back to what it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. Yeah, and I'm having a great time now. This is a great gift. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah, Ryan, Sayori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Now you see he's a good friend now. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Ryan, Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. I see a glimmer of light run across the metallic surface of her now scissor arms. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Ryan, I... Sayori bar barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away, and if there's anything that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Ryan. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain, but your hugs are so warm. I get that a lot. And that's really scary, too. Sayori lets me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's gonna be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, uh, it's what I want. I promise. I, I think that would be nice then. Yeah, Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. If only you could cancel helping out drawing the banner. Unfortunately, it's mission critical. If it was anything but the banner helping for my extracurricular club, I'd love to be here. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me in my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah, 
It's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. That's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. Honestly, I thought we did a good job of, uh, you know, doing what we can to be supportive there. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy, but it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Or it, I decided to ignore it? Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. Yo, sick room, dude. You got the bookshelves, you got the Logitech keyboard. You got a double bed? How come your mom lets you have two beds strapped together? I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so that's very considerate of you to do. Ah, no, I was... There's all sorts of stuff you don't want to see in here, lady. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah, that would have been even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there! I snatched Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap as if she's making sure to keep track of them. So, um, shall we get started? Ah, yes. I have a few things planned that you can help me with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements, you say? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity and for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Ha! Ah, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. Something I like about you, actually. You keep me warm at night. On the go, so the go, gonna get it feel all right. Yeah, you know that song? <laughs> Is that so? That makes me feel relieved and kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that'd be really neat. What's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. Oh, no. My mom has a Facebook page I'd like you to join. Very simply, if you want to become an ambassador, all you have to do is buy the starter kit for $1,100 and then get nine of your friends to purchase a starter kit or start becoming an affiliate of their own and then they become your downline. And How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. I do have to tell you something about essential oils while we're here. I don't do too many disclaimers like this. I like an aromatherapy diffuser. You know, it's nice to walk into a room and get a nice smell. You gotta be careful. Some people sell essential oils. They don't put like a warning label on it. You should know they're very toxic to pets sometimes. Tea tree oil, eucalyptus. You know, you can get like aromatherapy juices that don't have anything that's toxic to pets, but you should always check. Because we were using an oil diffuser and then one of my friends was talking to me out of nowhere and was just like, hey, you should really check your essential oils to make sure they're not toxic. 
Because, you know, he was talking about his own experience that, like, he, you know, had to take his cat to the vet for it. And then it was like, wouldn't you know it, it's luckily, like, not that harmful, but it was like a little tea tree oil extract in one of these things that we were diffusing into the house, like, blanketing it in poisonous vapor or something like that. So, we're lucky we caught it fast, let me put it that way. But anyway, you can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection, it's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole in the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that would be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable, but you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. So when my wife asks me what I want for dinner, and I'm just trying to find a way to get her to say what she wants, so I agree. But well, you're probably craving something, so... Yeah, sure, that sounds good. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I got it over here, girl. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm gonna put pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you'd put it. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Ryan. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, all right. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's a karambit, buddy! She's a gamer! That's a stat track karambit. That thing's worth like 300 bucks on the Steam Marketplace. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. <laughs> well, embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're gonna think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I'll have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. All right. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I can't help it. Sometimes my shoulders become knives and they stick out of my body and they cut people's hair. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and the feeling of danger, maybe. Ooh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you get about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? At the knife store? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ouch! Ryan! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh, no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah. She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah. Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. Um. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Ooh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? 
I'm not gonna lie, girl, you just posted cringe. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise, but I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Ooh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? All right, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Ryan, did you really just do that? Now we're even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweetest aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Ryan. Yuri giggles shyly. Eh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Ah, I don't think I'll need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but net. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than expected and will be a very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Well, I think that's enough weirdness for one day. I'm going to save the game. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Again, it's worth noting. We're going through some heavy subject matter here. So if at any point you feel like you want to stop watching, please, for the love of God, do. You know what you're getting into here. Or you at least got an idea now. Thanks for your support. This was indeed a milestone for getting... Uh, uh, a bonus for getting to 820,000 subscribers. Thank you for that. I hope you'll continue to show me your support, and I'll see you next time. See ya!